sitting there in Vanuatu. Um, we are uh, not going back permanently now, but we still like to uh, show you a little bit of what we've done there, uh, what happened. Uh, after the end of that, we got a small uh, set of photos from the recent cyclones um, that have also affected them. But first, what we've done there. For those of you who do not know the geography, well, you know your geography, but Vanuatu is a small island group uh, there by the Arrow, about 2,000 k's north of New Zealand. Um, that's the group itself, where the squares are. Um, well, that was from the uh, Cyclone Herald last year, two, three years ago. So these are the churches, the group, uh, the church in Malakula, about 60 members. Uh, that's been established in 1974. This is the group in Vila from about three years ago. Uh, there are not as many now. Uh, some have left, <coughs> uh, moved to the islands, and yeah, it's a, just a small group. And this is the group in Tana that's been affected severely by the, both cyclones. Uh, we'll show some pictures, have a good pictures of them. Uh, on Thursday, we heard that the, they're all safe. Their gardens are pretty well destroyed. But there's been no communication since Thursday, so uh, I haven't heard what's happened to them since. Oops. So this is the island of Afate, where we were based. Uh, by the arrow, that's the, uh, the two buildings, the mission house and the church house, um, where we uh, were based. Uh, that sign is gone, uh, and one of the posts is ripped out too. They were firmly put in concrete, but uh, just imagine something coming at you at 200 k's an hour. Uh, we can only imagine that in fast cars, but when the wind goes at that speed, it pulls out posts, concrete posts. Uh, yeah. Uh, that's the compound, uh, the mission house on your left, I think. Let me see. You're right, yes. My right too. And um, maintenance for the buildings, uh, the roofs needed repainting, so they like their bright colors, that's gone in blue. As you can see there again. Uh, this was the morning of the cyclone, uh, when they were in the eye of the storm. And so it all looks nice and tidy still. And this is early afternoon when some uh, trees had gone. That's after the second set of winds, when it rose to about force four. Uh, so the trees... Yeah, in a cyclone Judy. Yeah, there was Cyclone Judy. That was on Wednesday. And that was the cleanup. Uh, I've got another comparison after Cyclone Kevin at the end of the next set. So these are the buildings, uh, the church itself, uh, the auditorium. Uh, again, the group is much smaller now, but they still meet on Sundays, uh, sometimes not for a sermon. They just read and uh, read the scriptures and pray and sing. Um, and this is um, the family from Douglas, uh, from, uh, let me see. Just That's uh, Petra and Sapek, that's the young and the two youngest ones. We asked for a family photo, but with all the cyclone and stuff uh, that didn't happen. So this is our mission house. Yeah, this is, no, that's for you. Yeah. Okay. This is the um, inside. We've got a before and after the shots. So when we first went there, um, OMB was happy to um, have us spend some money. When we first saw it, it was like the worst holiday day house you'd ever seen. But when you thought about it, it had power. There was gas for cooking. And um, we were able to fix the ceiling fans. Uh, the floors uh, were co uh, concrete. But the concrete, I've never seen footpaths as rough as, as these floors were. So we were able to put some tiles down in the kitchen and in the bathroom and in the toilet. 
Peter helped make the bed. Um, the people at the time when we Builders. bought the, it, yeah, he built the bed and when we um, bought the mattress, they were so excited because that meant, meant that we'd be coming back. Um, so, yeah. So Malakula is where the, the, the mother congregation is. Um, that's the building, goes back to 1980, I think. Uh, they're building, they had two church buildings. You'll see the other one in a minute. These are the mission accommodation. <coughs> uh, the building on the left is also a Sunday school, but on the right, that's where visiting uh, missionaries come for when they visit for various purposes. Um, you see that the, the roof is made out of thatch. They, they've got a special um, shrub tree that they harvest the leaves from, and there you see how they're making thatch. And this is in, my, in, in, in Vila, but, and, that's, and they just uh, layer them down the roof, and it's pretty waterproof, but it needs maintenance, just as all the thatching in Europe needed mention, uh, maintenance. But it's still very, a, a very common roof covering there. And if they got the money, they'll also put uh, ne a wire netting over it because otherwise the rats will chew through it. Yeah. So here's the inside of the church then uh, with the congregation. Um, they have um, flash floods there too. Uh, the difference between the left and the right hand is about two meters of water. Uh, that river now is, is a power station at the top. So on that island in Malakula, they have power once it all gets to all the people. This is the new building. Uh, they built it out of concrete blocks, uh, corrugated iron roof, and then still need to install the louvre windows uh, in all the gaps. And that's a typical uh, building, typical house there uh, woven from bamboo with the uh, thatched roofs. So that's on more so the islands. In Vila, they'll have more, um, well, some very basic houses, but otherwise they're, uh, yeah, corrugated iron walls and roof, um, dirt floor, or some of them will have concrete, um, very basic. This is the island of Tana, uh, congregation, uh, the airport building. Uh, Tana, because it's got the uh, volcano Yasur, which is uh, always active. They have quite an uh, attractive uh, tourism um, industry, and the, 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 the terminal is part of the, the church building in Tana. In, uh, Cyclone Pem destroyed it in 2015, and it was rebuilt also with the help of some people coming from New Zealand. It's the mission house where we stayed. That's the inside of the mission house. So the house has deteriorated a lot. It was built um, in, the, in the late 90s for a missionary family, but since then, um, yeah, so, so the kitchen basically has no running water or anything like that. There's a tank outside, um, so a little gas cooker. Um, the fridge, I would, doesn't work, but I'd put food in there because uh, the place is riddled with rats. So when we came there, we took some rat poison with us and the first night there was lots of noise of these rats fighting and running all over the place. But as we were there for a week, but as that went along, there was less until the, the day before we left, um, Peter came in and, and woke me and said, you know, time to get up. And um, by the way, there's a, a rat in the shower. I said, um, dead or alive? No alive but it's not moving much because obviously it, it had some of that poison but not sufficient so I kind of um, I don't think I want to go into the bathroom until that rat is gone so he he went off and found the other elder Tom and his son-in-law and they came and they had this really big fat stick with them so the three men went into there and talking and I I could see from the bed I was watching and they hear this big noise of the bang as the stick went down and this rat did it move <laughs> it was gone he missed <laughs> it was a big um from then on whenever going to the bathroom i'd make lots of noise and bang the door and stuff to make sure there was nothing in there when i went um yeah at night time we would um yeah i'd put food away in the fridge and clean up and be out of there because otherwise the rats would get at it 
um, uh, on the island. Um, that's a photo of some washing. Um, used to think that some of the nappies I use for the children are quite thin. Well, these nappies are see-through. Um, they, they wash by hand. There's a shortage of water, so in summertime they'll sometimes go down because this church is on the top, um, but they'll go down to the sea and have a wash and wash their clothes. Um, they, because of the active volcano there is regularly, there's just a layer of, of dust, of, of ash. So um, you put something clean on very quickly you know, the children, you're, you're grubby. Um, yeah, there's no, um, I mean, with the, like, you saw the shower room, but the water isn't running, so you just use a bucket, do a bucket bath. Um, and the, the toilet, um, we threw water into the cistern, and then that way we could flush. But otherwise, the people there don't have electricity. We didn't have electricity there neither. You use your solar lights, because it was overcast a lot of the time, we couldn't charge them much, so. Um, yeah, we just make do. So this is the congregation at worship. That's an earlier year, but there's still uh, quite a large congregation. Pro well, for there, uh, maybe 30 or 40 people. Um, this was uh, last time we were there in August. I led a worship service. And then on the left-hand side is the elder Tom Codd, who left the first half, led the first half of the service in the, in the local language. And they read the Bible too in the local language then. Amazing Grace in Bislama, one of the verses. There's about 25 there, but they probably put a congregation of 100 at least equal, if not a shame, because they've got all very good voices and they really belt it out. It's uh, very nice to sing with them. Uh, this was the Bible teaching workshop I did in Tana. Um, I've done three there, no, two there, and three in Malakula due to the circumstances and that's really one of the most exciting things yeah for me as, as teaching then you, you see the lights go on their eyes light up and that is nearly worth it uh, well all those years that I've that we've been there uh, we didn't get to see people get the message and the, 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 the light goes on that is just really great and they expressed it too they came to see us later on and said that they, they thought it was really good and that's yeah that makes it worth it it's um, and as part of the training uh, when i went there it was to train the leaders but also the congregations to do workshops like this to uh, to preach to to present sermons the best i can to to instruct them in the in the doctrines of the of the church the doctrines of the Bible. Uh, when they celebrate, they celebrate with gusto. So these were uh, three birthdays, there are three birthday cakes, and yeah, they, they do everything uh, large. Uh, whether they can afford to or not, that's what we ask ourselves then. But it was a great celebration. Um, I took that photo, uh, the kids were busy digging. Now, I've circled the three that had knives. They're probably um, eight to ten inch knives. And they just walk around with them. They do all sorts of things. And I'm not sure that you would like your children to walk around with something that size. Um, they certainly wouldn't be allowed to walk, about, uh, to walk around like that in town. But they, they loved having their photo taken. They had some rain there too, so yeah, the road becomes mud. 
So the work on Vanuatu started in 69 with a translation work by uh, Mr. Greg Fox and Luke Zelstra. You see them in that photo there. Uh, they had to walk uh, five hours to do their shopping and then walk five hours back with 40 or 50 kgs on their backs. That was just for the meat. They did it oh, once a month, sometimes more often. There was no road. So this is them at work um, with a help, translation helper. That is his son, Andrew. Uh, this is Greg Fox, and that's his son, Andrew, who continued that work. Uh, translation checking again. And this is Luke Zelstra. Uh, they got not quite sure what they have there, but they speak into it. But again, that's the work of translation of the New Testament into the big numbers language. Uh, there were also men who focused on training, uh, translating things into Bislama, the trade language. This was the work of the Reverend Jack Wiley and his wife Enid. So they translate uh, small commentaries, they uh, translate, uh, they do Bible studies and publish them. And this is some of the things that we've been privileged to do uh, through the, um, the, the large, well, the incredible fundraising effort by the cadets and gems a few years ago. We could purchase uh, new hymnals for them and Bibles, which we then handed over to the different congregations, uh, with the, I think with the Elders Conference uh, three years ago. And they were, um, we also um, republished uh, some of their hymnals. Uh, on the left you see it's basically falling apart, so I uh, scanned it all and we republished it uh, in these little booklets. This is their children's catechism that had been published years ago, but we made another uh, printing of that as well. And this is, well, the latest effort. Um, the, this is the Bisla English Bislam Heidelberg Catechism. It needs a final checking still, but the Westminster Shorter Catechism, I'm just waiting for some final checks and then that can be printed here in, in Hamilton. It's a lot, lot cheaper, so uh, I'd hope to print it there, but it was so expensive, we decided not to. Uh, SIL, uh, Wycliffe, they do also do fairly good work. This is a uh, Bible, um, critical thinking about the Bible, and uh, they get people, uh, pastors from all over Vanuatu and train them uh, in biblical thinking. Um, these are Miklos and Sophia Greitzer, uh, SIL missionaries in Tana, who are friends with us now, and they actually staying in a mission house while they're in, in, in Port Vila. Sunday school class, uh, Sunday school doesn't meet very often because the children don't come always. Uh, yeah, this is, well, uh, yeah. So these, uh, Pictures of all the, at the last presbytery meeting we all preached. So just, that says there. Uh, co um, local culture is getting stronger again. These are stones that they used to consult if they uh, needed wisdom here, the magic stone. Uh, they have a security stone. They also have a killing stone. Say they want to kill somebody, they go to the stone and ask is it right or whether they could do it and all that kind of thing. And there's actually, uh, they have their meeting houses and there was something in the paper last year that said that the missionaries had destroyed the meeting house and now they could finally rebuild it. So it's a little bit like uh, God commanded Israel to destroy all the uh, idol temples and cast images. Um, and a lot of archaeologists um, uh, are not very happy with it now because they would have liked to see what uh, went on. And that's happening there again too. So the gospel, there's a great need for the gospel to continue to be preached and proclaimed and brought into that land. Uh, as uh, presbytery activities, we had the elders conference in 2020 where uh, I took them through uh, workshops on preaching, on worldview, uh, the covenants, grace and redemption, and that was all quite um, busy. Um. Um, 
<clears throat> you may have noticed that we're dressed a bit colourful. They, they love their colourful dresses. When the missionaries first went to Vanuatu, the people didn't have clothes. They had some woven skirts or something like that, not much. Um, so I think it was the missionaries who were introduced as far as... Um, they, they, they call these... Uh, the missionaries call them Mother Hubbard dresses. Um, you get different... Uh, basically the same style, but they'll put lace on and everything like that. I never thought I would have one. I, it was not my, my choice, my taste. But um, <clears throat> before we came back, now that we were coming back, I thought, well, it actually would be quite good. They were so excited. They got us two outfits. And, um, and the, the joy um, when they saw it, you know, when I, we came out wearing them, it was kind of well worth it. I would wear it every day if that would make them happy. Um, <laughs> but... Uh, conference we went out for lunch once too and it was much appreciated they don't do that very often um, presbytery meetings um, with all the uh, welcoming and departure ceremonies uh, you got all sorts of uh, cloth hanging around your neck we got a bag there too um, um, there's a hole at the end of our road uh, when the brakes failed this van ended up there. They just turned it upside, the right side up again. This is the same hole, and it's filled with water now. And that's what happened at the, uh, with the cyclones too. Another bus, small accident there, brakes failed, or weren't put on properly. We have snakes, <coughs> uh, puppy dogs. The pig on the left is now in a cage on the right, it's about two years old or later. And the green lizards, anybody who's been in Vanuatu, you find them on the, the local streets and you can, they climb all over you, they're very harmless. That's uh, Douglas and me and uh, Estelle and Joanna. This uh, is Jackson, he is the... Um the mother had asked if we could um, take her to the hospital when she w went into labour and we said that was fine. So she rang up about 8 o'clock to say labour started, don't come yet. Maybe half an hour later she rang and said, oh, maybe you can come now. Um, so we, we went there and she found it difficult to, to walk to the car because she was having these contra contractions. Um, in the car her waters broke so she was very um, apologetic about that, and I'm kind of, it's, it's all right, it's fine. Um, and then we got to the hospital, and um, some of them went off to get a wheelchair, and we put her in the wheelchair, and then she couldn't, um, couldn't sit on the wheelchair. So we ended up that she moved out of the wheelchair, off the footpath, onto the grass, and looking around, um, I was the one with the most experience having five children, so I was the one to receive this little one and, um, and the midwife turned up about five minutes later and um, cut the cord and took mother and child <laughs> away. So, yeah. So it was uh, quite an experience, um, marvellous that, um, that the Lord gave life and, uh, yeah, because he, he made a bit of a noise. I thought, oh, he's alive. Thank you, Lord. <laughs> so that's him a few, a few months later. These are some of the celebrations. We had our fifth, 45th wedding anniversary there, so there was gift giving there too. And the cake to cut. Joanna had to make the cake. Um, Cascades, if you ever go there, this is certainly worthwhile. It's not too far out of um, Vila. Uh, lovely Airbnbs all over the place there with rocky beachfront. Uh, these were some of the fire tail bells. Um, this one family, they wanted to put on a meal for us, so May, the one with the red T-shirt, she spent all day where she was with a little gas cooker and she just kept making these different food um, and bought them in the evening because our place was bigger and we shared a meal together. It was lovely. Um. These are just pictures from our farewell evening. We'll just go through them. Uh, that's the flag that were uh, pressed upon us 
it was pressed upon us to hang it in a, in a, in a, in a room, so yeah, it's over our bed. Uh, they also have the custom, you can see the white on our faces, they put talcum powder on you, that's part of the ceremonies. Mm. And that's all there too. Uh, some, some of you have been to our place and you'll see that. So that's... Um, we want to encourage you to, to think about to often pray for Vanuatu and also that the Lord would raise up someone to go there again, to, to help them, to support them, to teach them. Um, they have basic teaching, but uh, the catechism is, the teaching of the catechism is quite unknown to them. All the, if you like, the details that we take for granted for knowing, uh, they don't. And it is lovely to, to see them learn. So yes, the, the, the closing prayer that, that, that our churches will be able to continue to provide personnel as well as other assistance to help the, pers the, the, the Presbyterian Reformed Church of Vanuatu. I'll just quickly show you um, slides from Tana and Vila uh, after the cyclones. I'll just go through them, I won't comment. That's in Tana. You will have seen some pictures on TV or shorts, uh, short clips. So that's around the, the, the church compound, yeah. So some trees have lost their leaves, not all. So the cyclone wasn't that strong. So they were Saturday morning, these last photos. Now this was after Judy. And this was after Cyclone Kevin. Same picture, same, same scene. <laughs> There are um, people from the community uh, sheltered in the church uh, over the time of the cyclone. So <clears throat> they just come with their mattresses and we've got uh, cyclone shutters. And um, yeah, they stay in there until the worst of the storm is over and then they go back to see what they can salvage um, from their places. People before a cyclone, they'll uh, deconstruct their house and after the cyclone, they built it again. So it's still all there. Because if all your corrugated iron goes, other people will pick it up and rebuild their house with it. And you may have to use other people's corrugated iron if you can find some. Yeah. Don't run away. Don't run away. We're going to pray for these guys. And thanks for very much for showing you. This is the first presentation you've, you've done uh, since you've been back and uh, we, we um, know how it's uh, uh, been uh, coming back. We love having you back in the church community but we recognise how, how close Vanuatu is to your hearts and so we certainly will uphold the church there. So let's pray before we go and have a couple. Father in heaven, we thank you so much for your love for us in Christ Jesus. We thank you that uh, you have blessed Peter and Joanna's work in Vanuatu and we do ask that you would continue to bless the church there in Vanuatu. We pray that you would raise up uh, future leaders to serve there and teach there and equip the people there. Father, we pray for them, especially at this time, that you would be with them with the clean-up of the cyclones. We thank you that all the uh, people there in the churches have not... Um, there's not been no deceased. And so we pray that you would guide them as they rebuild their places and as they continue to proclaim the gospel of Jesus. Father, thank you for uh, this time we've had this morning in worship and also hearing about your church further afield. And we do pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Enjoy your cuppa.